Hi everyone, Paul I Sam. Welcome to, well, I've got a couple of inbox reviews today. Uh, it's Aliru, who are very kind to send me a couple of kits to review. Uh, we've got the World of Tanks uh, Heta 38T and the Arado AR196 in 48 scale and the tanks in 35th. So, these have been re released. Uh, the tank, obviously, for World, uh, World of Tanks and the aircraft for World of Warplanes. They both come promotional codes um, with the kit and a few guys and girls out there watching to use. So I will put the codes in the description down below. So if you want to find them, scroll down, click on it, have a look, and all the information's there. Um, the information is included with the kit as well, I believe. Uh, I've not really had a look through at all, completely blind on these ones. Uh, not really looked through at all. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what we get. Now both kits retail for around the £27 mark. So the kind of yeah, mid-priced kind of thing. Um, I'm not a big fan of artillery, I'm going to admit that. I've been nothing but disappointed in the past. So hopefully uh, these can change my perception a little bit today. Fingers crossed, we will see. Uh, but I'll give them a review and we'll have a look and see what we get. So, don't forget your promotional codes are in the description down below. Pop down, have a look. And uh, as always, um, let's see how we get on. Right, first off, let's have a look at the Hetzer. So, it's in a World of Tanks box called Rollout. Uh, it's a 38T Hetzer model kit in 135th scale. Um, obviously, it's got some uh, promotional uh, stuff in there for the game itself. I don't play the game, so I'm not 100% clued up on it, but I'll give the information as good as I can. In the description to this video, you'll find the respective codes for this kit and the Arado one for uh, World, World of uh, Warplanes. Um, so have a look there, they are there, and there's info in the box on this one, I don't think there is on the other one. So on the front we've got a nice bit of artwork, the Heta coming over a little crest. Uh, on the front we've got tank guide, uh, including historical references for in-game tips for World of Tanks. Uh, some decals are in there, I think they are specific to the game. We've got a little sample of cement, which is very cute. Uh, we've got the invite code and a bonus code as well. It's kit number 36511, and there's an exclusive in-game emblem. Ooh, lovely. Uh, on the side of the box, uh, we've got a bit of info on some other kits. You've got the Tiger, uh, Tiger 1, the Sherman, and the T-34-85 as well. And on the other side, we have the decals. So they're the decals that come with the kit. Quite a lot. Age 14 plus you can see, and some information on the Hetzer itself. If you want to read that, as always, give it a pause, have a read, and there you go. Right, now, I believe my references say this is a original new tool from 1972. Uh, it's had dozens, well, over a dozen reboxings over the year, year, the years, and um, we currently ended up here with a tiller area, put new decals in, uh, like I say, specifically for World of Tanks. So, we've got our instructions, which are in a big format. Nice colour uh, call out on there. We'll have a look at those in a little bit. We've got our codes for the game. So, there they are, there and there. I will put those in the uh, description down below. And our emblems and inscriptions, again, for the game as well. I'll have a look at those in a bit. We've got uh, some information on the tank itself so it's a full-on tank guide it goes all the way through telling you about the vehicle etc uh, historical background so on and so forth and the kit itself and a little tiny pot of glue very cute very very cute not used this stuff before but it is a tiny little bottle i'll give it a go see what it's like um we shall see nothing else in the box as you can see um retail on this is around the 25 to 27 pound mark uh, depending on where you go. Um, it's still baffling to me as to why a company's still reboxing kits that are over 40 years old. Um, but, hey, whatever floats your boat. Who am I to discuss that? So inside we've got the upper and lower hull on one spray. We'll have a look at that in a second. We've got vinyl tracks. Which, uh, yeah, not great. Um, we've got a sprue on there with the main gun. Some figures. Various other parts and components, and the road wheels, suspension, so on and so forth. Just three sprues in total, and the vinyl tracks as well. And I think we'll start with the upper and lower hull. Now, like I say, this kit, my sources are saying is over 40 years old, 
whether or not that's true I don't know um, it certainly looks old it's not the most recent tool and the plastic yeah it's a bit strange plastic very thin uh, there is detail there it's not fantastic but it is present plastic does seem very weird uh, lower hull's got a little bit of detail around the running gear some raised detail um, not a lot of flash on this sprue there isn't that other one I've just seen it before but yeah it's alright I suppose we've got a bit of uh, detail for the hinges you got some uh, grills I'm assuming we got grab handles with it I'm assuming there is uh, so on and so forth so yeah it's there the detail is not the best but it is there and well it's going to look like a Hetzer so there we go. Uh, we're going to road wheels next, running gear. So we've got sprockets, which are immensely thin. We've got some leaf springs, road wheels, various other little components. The flash is present in quite a few places, like around these wheels, so on and so forth. And the plastic, I'm not going to lie, I'm always honest in my reviews, the plastic does feel cheap. It's uh, It may be time for a retool on this one. Because it does feel rather cheap. Um, where there is detail, it's a bit vague in places on the sprockets. It's very, very vague. It's not really there as such. The teeth look a bit meh. Um, the spring suspension, leaf springs, they look okay. But everything else, the detail is just vague in places. Yes. Sadly, this one's showing its age, that's for sure. Yes, and if I was in the market for a Hetza, uh, this wouldn't be my choice. I'm going to have to admit that, I'm afraid. Uh, going to the main gun, we've got some uh, the hull components. We've got the MG. We've got some figures, which I'll have a look at in a second. I'll even zoom in for the figures so you can have a laugh. Uh, sorry, a look. Um... Yeah, the gun detail is very vague and not really a lot there. Uh, I've got the mantlet, flash on it, no texture to it at all. Whether it should or not, I don't know. Yeah, there is detail. It's not fantastic. It is there. It is present. But it's definitely not the most detailed of the kit. It's certainly showing the days, like I say. We come and have a look at the figures. I'm only on single camera today. Uh, so I'll zoom you in instead. We'll look at the figures. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're, uh, yeah, they've got a bit of flash on them. They're not too bad. I've seen worse. Um, the faces are a bit creepy, though. Let's see how close I can get to those faces without blaring. Come on, focus. No, you're not going to focus, are you? There we go. Stop it wobbling. Yeah, the faces are a little bit of cream, a little bit of cherub. Cherub-like. I say there's a bit of flash on there as well. The figures themselves. The details there, it's not too bad. I've seen worse. Get a bit of clean-up. Got your binoculars. A couple of hands. Yeah, but elsewhere, if you look at the raised detail, it is there. It's just vague, you've got some of the ejector pin marks underneath showing through and what have you. Um, so yeah, it's it's showing its age, this kit, it certainly is, it's not the most detailed. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it does baffle me why manufacturers will rebox very old kits like this. I'm hoping the Arado's a bit better, it's a, the Arado's a 2010 new tool, so it would be significantly better than this. But it's there, I'm sure it'll build up into a decent model. It's going to look like a Hetzer. Um, and obviously, you make what you can out of the box. Um, we've got the vinyl tracks. Again, the details there, it's a bit vague in places. Um, I'm not a fan of vinyl tracks. These ones are there. Like I said, they've got a bit of detail. Gloom together is always fun. But they are there, they're not the, not the worst, not the best. But they are certainly there. That's about all I can say, really. 
Right, uh, instructions, let's have a look what we get in the actual box. So the kit's a bit disappointing, I'm not going to lie. If we go through this, this is a, well, the tanks uh, rolled out, free to play, uh, tank guide. So it's historical references and in-game tips. I'm not going to go through it all, but we've got some strategy, historical background, fight in the tiger, so it's got aim points, hit points, so on and so forth, fighting the Sherman, fighting the Ferdinand, fighting the Panther... Fight the Leopard 1, T-34, Jagdpanzer 4, Fight the Hetzer, so it's fighting itself, and there we go. So a bit of info, so there's that, handy little guide. You've got your decals, which are specific to the game. They are there, they are quite nice decals actually. I'm not sure who's going to print them, I would not say they are cartographed because they are rather actually looking at them they are not great at all yeah they're not the nicest decals they're a bit vague and a bit out of register yeah so not the nicest decals but they're different they are there you got lion's heads horses tigers Dinosaurs, eagles, skulls, grenades, snakes, cards, binoculars, peace symbols, hornets, so on. So this is a good little selection there. Comes with a kit. We've got your. Let's have a look what this is. We've got. Oh, it's tips and tricks. My favourite. Oh, different languages. So yeah, you got all your tips and tricks about instructions, glue, cleaning. Cutting parts, sanding, gluing, clamping, so on and so forth, all the way through. Basically, don't jump out of a window while you're modelling, and don't eat wolf nipples whilst uh, gluing parts together, just in case you choke on one. It's that simple. Um, so there we go. And then this one will be the promotional code. So you've got uh, codes for all players. I believe they are PC codes, unfortunately, um, if you're unlucky enough to have a PC. And um, then you got static invite codes to share with all your friends. Um, there we go. So I will put the details of these in the ones that I've been sent by Atelier themselves. I'll put them in the description below if you want them. They are there. You can only use the codes once. And I believe it's only valid with new accounts. I think I read somewhere as well. Instructions. Right. So they're in a tall instruction type um Got the same info as on the side. There's more information there. If you want to read it, pause it. There you go. Uh, it's in a tall instruction sheet, which is, is going to fold all the way out, which is really annoying. There you go. You've got a map. Uh, inside, you've got warnings. Again, man, don't choke on your wolf nipples. Uh, you've got the sprue layouts there. Very good. You get lost of all three sprues. Um... Colour colour out at the bottom, which is flat black. I can't see it. Hang on, give me a sec. Flat black, gloss white, pale green, gun metal, and flat rust. And then we go on to assembly. Quite busy assembly steps, as you can see there. There's quite a lot in there. Yeah. So literally, grab 40 parts, chuck them all on. And you're good to go. Same there as well. So basically, it's a continuation. As we go, go to the top, get your tracks on, you got to heat up a screwdriver to melt the tabs. Never ever got that to work, never ever. Um, you need some good glue, uh, I believe uh, punch or repair glue often works. Uh, or staples, there's a good one, I've stapled them before, a bit of cotton and thread, that works. Uh, the gun being put into the upper hull and the mantlet. And then we've got the um, coaxial MG on top, grab rails, so on and so forth. So the instructions are alright, they're not too bad actually. I've seen, uh, you can see what you're doing, you can see where parts go. A little bit vague in places, but you can pick out where they're going. So it's not too bad. Until we get to the back. Now, obviously we've got very nice uh, colour collards. So we've got a winter camo there, with in, in its uh, garage as well. And then the summer camo call out, which I think I like that one best. Again, at the bottom there, it's calling out for Tilleries acrylic paint which is basically uh, the layer paint we bold. So a couple of nice camo schemes there. I do like that one. That one's my favourite. And um, we've got a third one on the back, which is a desert one. That's quite nice as well. I do like that. You can get a full World of Tanks 
acrylic paint set there at the bottom, quite handy uh, if you're into your world of tanks. Like I say, instructions, they're not bad. Decals on the back, a bit of information about um, setting them, popping them on. Choose your emblems and inscriptions and place them as shown in the example. There you go. So, yeah, instructions are quite good actually. A uh, little bit busy in some places, but the rest of it, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. You've got a piece of paper on the back for defective parts. Um, yep. And uh, where you got it from, so on and so forth. Cut that out and send back the, uh, the kit. Already part of the kit you need. Right, now on to the uh, World of Warplanes, or Ardu AR 196A3. So 48 scale kit, it's kit number 2784. This is a new tool in 2010. It's actually been reboxed by Tamiya as well over the past few years, and it was re released in 2018 with new decals, which I'm assuming are for World of Warplanes. On the side, as always, you've got a bit of information about the aircraft itself. If you want to read it, give it a pause. There we go. And on the back, we've got the colour callouts. Very smart with the yellow bands on. I do like that. And more information there 14 plus again, adult collectors age 14 and older. And a bit of information about the kit. Just It contains an assembled bubble kit, which I think we kind of know if we're buying it. But hey, you never know. Uh, it's got a super decal sheet for five versions. Colour instruction sheet contains a beach and trolley as well. That's cool. Figures not included, ship not included. Oh, well, that's a shame. Could have got a ship in there. Right, so we open it up. Hopefully this one's going to be a bit more positive than the uh, the tank. It immediately looks a bit better. So, as before, we've got some promotional info. All the warplanes. Quite a nice decal sheet, actually. Very nice. Instructions. And colour call. Ooh, a nice colour call out there. I like that. A quick glimpse of that. In the box, we have two large sprues, a clear sprue, and then two smaller sprues with the pontoon thing, the floaty bobs things on so we'll start with the big ones let's have a look i've got this kit in 30 second scale released by uh rebel uh the twin boom one is getting rather hard to find now for some reason the rebel decided to stop making it the single pontoon boom one is available but i don't think it's as good as a twin myself um so it's going to be interesting to see what this like it actually looks pretty positive to be fair all oh, those panel lines, they are quite deep. So we'll start on the wings. So we've got the upper and lower wing surfaces there. Uh, we've got some strengthening braces, control surfaces, you've got the flaps there, the upper and lower, yeah, the two parts. We've got what looks to be the rudder. Um, now there's flash evidence here and there. There's quite a bit of flash. The surface detail isn't the best. I've seen a lot better before. Um, some of those panel lines are trench-like. Yeah, they are rather deep. Um, prominent at the back, quite vague in the middle. In fact, the deeper one side than the other. That side's barely there. That side is actually present. But there's some surface detail there. You've got the ribbon on the uh, ailerons. Um, we've got some raised surface detail, so on and so forth in there. There's a bit of flash. The nav lights are a bit vague. But there we go, we've got the tail, more flash, it's come off. A lot of the flash you can actually take off of your finger, to be fair. So it's not the end of the world, but for a new tool that's eight years old, it shouldn't have any flash on it really at all. But it's, uh, the only thing I don't like is this, the way the lower wing surface is flapping around just on one sprue locator, and these as well, because what's going to happen is you're going to get stress, you're going to get stress marks on the plastic there, that's going to show through when you cut them off. So it's not the greatest, really. But it is there. And that's that. So, yeah, not too bad. A bit of vague detail, but it is there. And what it's going to build up like, I'm not a massive fan of artillery kits. So I might sound like a bit uh, biased today. Um, I'm yet to build a good one. So we shall see. Um, we've got a wooden um, section there. I'm assuming that's the floor, is it? That's the beaching trolley. Duh. Oh my god, Paul. Yeah, so you got the beaching trolley there, uh, which just has some wood effect on it. Which actually, I'm going to zoom in for that because that's quite nice. So if you look at that, there's actually knots in the wood and a bit of grain, which is actually quite nice to be fair. 
Um, let's have a look around where else we've got. We've got the two sides of the fuselage. Again, it's got some nice stretched canvas detail there. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's just vague. That's, that's the only thing I've got the criticism. It is vague detail. But it is there. It's better to be vague than not there at all. Um, so there's both sides. They're going to be identical. It's obviously mirrored. Uh, yeah, we've got some something on the plastic there, so yeah, it might be worth a wipe over with some clean or something before you spray it. We've got engine cowlings there, we've got the uh, copper floor, we've got um, the prop, some instruments there, which, yeah, they're not bad. Again, a bit vague. I think that's going to be... Oh, and the sprues just snapped. Wow, it's good. Don't know my own strength. Uh, the props there, a bit of flash around the edges, but again, it, it's very minimal flash. It will just rub off. But my point is going to be, and people are probably moaning keep going on about the flash. It's a new tool. It shouldn't have flash. Uh, it's only eight years old. There's no excuse for it at all. You've got the foot controls there. They're massive. Yeah, they're quite big. Uh, the yoke is there. Hmm. Yeah. And then we've got... I'm going to guess there's sideboard details there. That's got some detail and some strengthening bars through it. Some sort of extinguisher. I'm guessing that's the seat. Okay. A bit vague, but anyway. So there's those. We've got the clear parts. I'll look at last. I'll look at these um, the floats first. There's the twin float plane, which does look better, in my opinion, than the single. Do we have our identical sprues? Indeed we do. So we've got two of these. So obviously you've got the floats are going to be gluing together. There's detail on those. Again, same as the rest of the aircraft. It's prominent in one place and it goes vague in another. Um, we've got what I'm assuming is a top section. Obviously you've got two halves and a top section to glue over as well. There's a nice bit, actually quite a nice bit of detail on that part. It's not too bad at all. Again, there are these single parts. And this is what happens. If you can see that there, the part's starting to come off the sprue. And what they'll do, they'll put stress around the plastic, and then you've got somewhere else you have to fill because it's come off. It's not the end of the world, but it's still annoying. You've got some ordnance. We've got some magazines. And we've got some wheels as well. Which glue in half, a little bit of tread detail on there. Nothing to write home about. But they're okay. Clear parts. So that's all the sprues gone out of the kit. Uh, one other thing I didn't look at earlier, that little cute little bottle of glue properly. Um, let's see what it smells like. It smells like... Hmm. No other glue I've smelt before. So I was going to think it might be a mech um, bottle, but it's not. Right, clear parts. Right, there's a bit of distortion in the clear parts, um, but they are they're pretty clear. They're not bad at all, actually, to be fair. Yeah, they're not bad. Not bad at all. You've got three pieces. And yeah, they're not bad at all. What they're going to fit like, I don't know. But for clear parts, they're not too bad. There's a bit of distortion, but it's not too bad at all. So yeah, okay. That's not bad. Let's pop that in there and let's have a look at what else we get with the kit. So you've got your World of Warplanes. This is your Get Airborne, a uh, bit of information about the game. Uh, Tillery teams up World of Warplanes, redeem your invite code. So there's an invite code there as well. Uh, unlocks the following game goods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's redeem your code. Go to there, etc, etc. Uh, we've got the decal sheet, which is... Not bad at all. Made printed by Zanchetti Booker Nisco. <laughs> I probably butchered that name. In Italy. Uh, better than the other decals. I'll definitely give them them. So they are the, I believe there's, was it five schemes I think we had? We'll have a look at those in a minute. So yeah, decals aren't bad at all. It's a decent decal sheet. Everything appears to be in register, including the duck holding the bomb. And you've got a seahorse, instrument panel. The, yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad at all, not bad decal sheet. We've got the instructions and the colour cards. We'll look at those last. So, typical Atelier instructions, not like the ones that came with the tank. 
Uh, so again, a bit more info there about the aircraft itself. You want to read it? Pause it. There we go. So this is a oh, another fold-out one. I hate these fold-out books. So you got your sprue layouts, you've got your colours, which are all M72, flat black, flat white, gunmetal, gloss red, and gloss green. I'm gonna guess they're all artillery callouts. You got your sprues all laid out there, and then we start assembly in the cockpit itself. A little bit clearer decals, decals, instructions this time. Uh, you can actually see where the parts are located better. Cockpit doesn't look too bad actually, quite a bit of detail in there. It's quite open as well, so you've got good um potential weathering in there. So that's not bad. You've got the fuselage halves going together. Engine being built up. There is an engine. We did look at that only very quickly though. Uh, the engine's in there, so you've got open and closed cowling, which is a nice choice. Got the upper and lower wing surfaces going together, attaching them to the fuselage as well. Um, I've got the uh, flaps getting attached. Obviously the other ones are fixed in place, building the float up. Quite self-explanatory really. Attaching the um, the legs for the floats, getting them on, and then obviously your dolly as well, the beaching dolly for the aircraft itself. Can you have that canopy open? I'm not sure you can. Don't know, don't know there's provision there to open the canopy at all. Uh, but apparently, uh, to do the antenna, you add cable with stirred plastic. Wow. I've stirred plastic, I never got that effect. Anyway, yeah, stirred plastic, lovely. And there we go, so there's instructions. Not bad, they are better than the other ones, I would say. Uh, just because they're a bit more clear, you can see what's going on. Right, so we've got a colour callout sheet. So, we've got this one in your typical splinter cam. All M72 and 73, the two greens. Excellent. And all M65 for the under surfaces. Quite nice. And that's off uh, the Tirpitz battleship. Uh, then we've got the Cruiser Prince Eugen. Eugene. Eugene. Uh, again, typical splinter cam 72, 73, 65. Very nice. You've got North Sea. And this has got the yellow ID bands on it. Very nice. That would be the one I would pick. I always go for the one that looks slightly different, unless it's something else. Then you've got the Royal Norwegian Air Force in there as well. That is in Euro Dark Green and RM65 again. Just green all over up services, blue lower. And then on the last sheet, single piece of A4, we've got the Bulgarian Air Force. Um, so we are on 72, 73, 65 again. Yellow ID bands on the wings. And again, typical splinter cam. So these are nice. I do like these colour collages you get. It does help when you're doing your decal placements or uh, making your camo itself. And a lot of people even photocopy these and, and blow them up to scale with the plane. Cut them out, use them as a mask as well. So yeah, instructions, call outs, don't look too bad. Um, and there you go. Okay, there we go. Well, hmm. The Arado does not too bad. It's a 2010 new tool. It's covered in flash in places, which in my opinion, it shouldn't be. It's a fairly new tool. It should be well made, well produced. The details are a little bit vague in places, but it's not bad. I've seen worse. The glass wasn't bad. The decals are good. The instructions are good. Color callouts are fantastic. I really do look at color callouts like that. So that's the bonuses. It's a simple kit. It's 27 pounds. So. For me, that needs to be about another £10 cheaper to make it worthwhile. That That's what the price point should be on that kit, personally, myself. Um, but it should build into a nice-looking Arado. The other, the other twin boom, I don't think there is a 40. I don't know, actually. I haven't looked. Um, but the 30-second scale Revel is good kit. I've got that myself, but it's not impossible to find for a good price. Um, like I said, it's a 2010 Rebox, uh, new tool, sorry, Rebox by Tamiya at some point, and then re-released uh, this year, I think it was, which, yeah, this year, with new decals for World of Warplanes. So, the Arado doesn't look too bad at all. Now, the Hetzer. Now, my sources say that's a 1972 new tool that's been reboxed a few times, over a dozen times over the years. It's had new parts added to it, and then it's been added new decals last year for World of Tanks. If it is that old, it's older than me by five years, <laughs> so it's 45 years old. 
Um, companies should not be reboxing kits at all. I'm honest, I give you an honest review all day long. I think it's a, a little bit unscrupulous sometimes. I've gotten in trouble for saying this before. Certain companies like to rebox all kits in nice shiny box. The World of Tanks box is going to catch the eye of uh, kids, uh, teenagers, young adults, and even people my age as well. Like, oh, World of Tanks. That looks great. I'll buy that. Get home. And I know my mate Nige did it a while back. He bought a Sherman. Um, nice shiny World of Tanks box. And it's an old kit in there. So, as always, research is key. Have a look around. Like I say, I went into these blind. Did a little bit of research just before I started filming. And I was shocked to see how old that kit was. It's off scale, mates. On the timeline, it's shown as being that old. And looking at the kit itself, it does look that old. So it's a little bit disappointing that at £27, it's a Reebok 45-year-old kit. If that's, you know, if you're happy paying that, by all means go. Again, that should be another £10 cheaper, in my opinion. Um, there's other headers out there. There's not many. I know Edward Reeboxed. Um, was it Dragon Kit? I forget now. I'm not a bit rusty on my armour because I haven't done it for so long. Um, but you get the Edward Hetzer, and uh, I believe that's a much better kit. So, a bit disappointing. Uh, it's an old kit, there's a lot of flash, some of the details vague. Uh, you get a little bottle of glue, if it's any uh, bonus. You get the bonus code. Instructions weren't too bad, a little bit uh, busy in places. Colour call art's very good. Um, and uh, it's a nice looking box, but it's an old kit in there, and I don't really like the practice of doing that. I think as a hobby that can put people off, they see a new kit, ooh, a fancy build and that, I haven't built a kit in years, they buy it, all oh, these kits are rubbish or not very good, and it can put them off, so I'm not a fan of it, if it's a rebox kit, it should literally say on the front, reboxed, 1972, new tool, um, so that's the way it should work in my opinion, but it's not going to, because that won't sell the kits, but you get an honest review off me, <coughs> I don't care who sees this or whatever, um, you'll always get an honest review off me. The Arado looks okay. Uh, it needs to be a little bit cheaper. If you shop around, you might get it cheaper. The Hetz is overpriced for what it is. It's an old kit. and uh, It's going to need a bit of work to make it look um, okay. I mean, it's just fake detail at the end of the day. It's an older kit. The tool and processes weren't as good. And that's that. So there we go. So again, both are around the £27 mark. You can get them from most major uh, online shops. Um, Amazon will probably have them, eBay and so on. Shop around, uh, shop smart, shop S smart, um, and see if you can get them cheaper. I think if you get them around the £20 mark, they're not too bad. Um, but certainly, yeah, have a look at the review. Take what you see and uh, make your own mind up. There we go. Thanks for Atelier for uh, sending me the samples. Very kind of you. Uh, nice to have a look inside the boxes. They're not my cup of tea, Atelier. I'm not going to lie. Um, I've been nothing but disappointed by the kit over the years. And, uh, yeah, it's just one of those. There we go. So thanks for watching. Um, as always, check out the forum, internationalscalemodeler.com. Facebook page is the same name. Both very well run. Free pages, free groups, uh, free forum as well. We have giveaways on there, uh, GBs, member base SIGs, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, obviously, we've got the Friday Night Live at the bench with myself and all the guys. Um, every Friday night, half seven, we do a live show, alternate from week to week from the show to a build night, which is proven popular at the minute. Uh, and as always, check out umpretail.com, myself and Lee's business. We sell everything from sanders, thinners, cleaners, washers, kits, primers, masking tape, tools, all sorts we've got it. You head on over there. And also, another plug, check out my Paul at ISM Facebook page. It's my own personal page. It's mostly stuff repeated for my ISM, but obviously it's my group, my page. And we've got a modeling hangout group for the for hangouts as well, and a live at the bench page as well uh, for the Friday night show. So plenty to get on with there. I'll put the links in the description down below. And there we go. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Take care. Bye bye.